It was Michael Scott Rohan's Anvil of Ice Trilogies. I can't remember exactly what for sure the name of his trilogy was, but it went beyond three books in the end anyway. I, I read the first three. But um, the third one was Hammer of the Sun. And um, reasonably meaty book. Reasonably meaty. I have the paperback, and it was a reasonably meaty book. Um, and I, it was, it's fantasy. And it's own fantasy world. And it's around, the, around 1990, somewhere around there, it was published. 89, 90, somewhere around there. And um, I read it many years ago, and I, details are mostly lost on me now. Not much, not any detail, practically, of any particular character names remain in my head. But I do remember that it's it was set in a uh, sort of around a Kesh or something, whatever it was called. I can't remember if it was Kesh, but um, it was a great city which was approximately equivalent to Rome, I think. And I think this is where the the uh, the forger was was doing his work on the hammer of the sun or something like that. But um, I I do remember the feel the. I was very heavy, and uh, it was, yeah, heavy and, I suppose, serious, I suppose, or um, so intense. You, know. you could probably feel the fires of the, the forge from the, um, the, the depth of the novel. And in, in the Chronicles of an Age of Darkness, it Hugh doesn't quite get to that death which uh, michael scott rohan gets but it's it certainly is uh fantasy and it's it's uh i suppose iron maiden are an, are an equivalent sort of idea in some ways from heavy metal band iron maiden that uh, they don't necessarily get the, the heavy depths of intellectual lyricism but uh, they get they get deep enough and they, they get very uh they're very strong in their the, the force of their lyrics for the action of the words and I think Hugh Cook at times, with the forcefulness of his dialogue, gets quite strong and uh, cutting, as it were. And a, a forge, a black blacksmith who works in a forge and hammers out swords and shields and things like that and morning stars and things like that, you know, he's, um, he's involved in a trade in older days where it was you were involved with men of action a lot of time, soldiers at arms and things like that, and a lot of action was going on. And a lot of sort of heavy heavy chat and bawdy chat probably took place. And it was it was a very important occupation in old Camelot, as it were. And um, to this day, it persists as being a thing which is done. A lot of swords these days are mostly sort of made for... Uh, glamorous reasons reasons and artistic reasons for putting on display and things like that. There's not as much sword fighting which goes on anymore, but around the globe in some conflict areas, there's a bit of this in that with some sword play. It probably happens a little bit here and there. Um, seven billion, seven and a half billion people on the planet, and there's usually some conflicts which crop up over each, each decade where lives are taken, unfortunately. But a swordsmith is still a, it's a, swordplay and swordsmithery is still a thing which is an adventure in life, isn't it? You know, getting involved in Dungeons and Dragons is lovely for the imagination, but actually forging that sword and getting involved with an activity in the adventures of life sort of world of Hugh Cook. Uh, Ola Milan and the warriors of Ola Milan fighting it out with swords and shields and the battles and the wicked of the witless doing the brave and bold deeds. You know, it's 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 a hell of a life and sort of for an adventure in life, even though it's most likely in in the way we would go about our adventures in life with this lifestyle channel would be in sort of in cosplay and role playing realities. The uh, the intensity of the, the genre is still very real, and um, certainly, this, as this channel says, there's plenty of adventure and action and things going on with such a lifestyle. Yeah.